All of these cars have been lovingly restored and are the pride and joy of the people who own them. For them, it's a pleasure to be able to add that special touch to a wedding day. We love the idea of an old car, and especially a vintage one, a Rolls Royce, so that's what we wanted. I think it's been it's made the day mm -hmm. a bit more special. Uh, rather than just going to a plane, everyday run around car, what you can get these days, getting an actual vintage car and one of this standard as well, what's been well maintained, it's been absolutely superb. The Law Commission's proposals would include wedding and funeral cars into legislation for taxis and private hire vehicles. Those who run vintage cars say the costs associated with that could mean the death knell for their businesses. Not only would we have to get a private hire operator's licence, but each of our cars would individually have to go through um, a local authority test, which is six times more expensive than the current MOT. The vehicles then would be private hire vehicles, and for these kind of vehicles it would be an increased insurance risk, so insurance premiums would rocket. As well as the cars, every driver would have to have a special licence. Most are retired gentlemen and the cost of that would be more than most earn in a year. If this legislation comes into place, the cost will be so prohibitive that uh, I may have to think about selling up and not being able to carry on. A lot of these people do it not for money but for love. One such enthusiast is Eddie Murray. He's tinkered with vintage vehicles since he was a child. Well, there's nothing like the old cars, you know, you'll never see them again and Rolls Royce are special for weddings and Bentleys, you know, and it's, they're just wonderful, I, I just love them. The campaign has got the attention of the local MP Rory Stewart. He's written to the Department of Transport and to the Chancellor to ask for wedding and funeral cars to remain exempt from the legislation. This business relies on people who are basically almost volunteers. They do it as a hobby. They'd probably do it for five or ten days in a year often. And so to put people through the full cost of all the checks and legislation and licensing as though they were a full-time taxi driver, I think is slightly taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut. The Law Commission are keen to point out that these proposals are just that and the final report given to government could differ greatly, which is why it's open to public consultation and that closes on the 10th of September. Marty Errington-Dodds in Gretna.